Most of you lever gun guys out there know that the 360 buck hammer was created because of the straight wall cartridge restrictions in some states. But does it offer anything worthwhile to you if you're not in one of those states? Guy Miner here from UltimateReloader.com. Today we're taking a look at the new kit on the block, the straight wall 360 buck hammer versus the old 3030, the popular choice for a hundred years in lever guns. We're also going to ask the question, does that 360 give you more than the 3030, enough more to make it worthwhile? And does the 360 actually step up to the plate and fill the role of the old and much respected 35 Remington cartridge? So that new 360 Buckhammer, where does it stand in the family of cartridges that are built for traditional tubular magazine lever action rifles. It came about just a few years ago to satisfy those straight wall requirements. It provides basically 35 Remington ballistics and performance in a straight wall case. It has a bigger, heavier bullet than the 3030 and less recoil than the big old 4570 when the 4570 is loaded pretty warm, as I tend to do sometimes. So to take a look at the 360 buck hammer, I decided to compare it to the 3030, which is the most popular, the best known of the rifle cartridges chambered in traditional lever actions with tubular magazines. It's been around for well over 100 years, and now there's a new kit on the block that may offer some, does offer some advantages. 3030, tried and true, classic, very popular. Uh, it's available all over the place. Most people who shoot lever guns are familiar with the 3030, and it is very capable for deer size game and even larger. It'll handle some bigger stuff. 360 buck hammer, still very new, relatively unknown. To me, I'm taking a look at this new straight wall case and finding that it kind of fills the role of the old 35, old and much respected 35 Remington, but in a straight wall version. And that's gonna give us a little more bullet, a little more thump than the 3030. So compare the two cartridges, I went ahead and used two rifles that we've had on the channel before. The 3030 in the X model, Henry, and we have used that quite a bit. In fact, I've even hunted with it. Uh, it's a much more modern take on the traditional lever gun. It has the synthetic stocks, it has some high-vis sights, the Muzzle is threaded, so you can attach a suppressor, and we've done that. Shooting 3030 suppressed is pretty cool. Uh, it is a more modern take on the traditional lever action rifle. We topped it this time with the Athlon, which really uh, kind of surprised me. I took a look at it, and I said, that's a one to six. That'll work well for lever gun hunting type things because it's really good for your shorter ranges that I tend to use a lever gun at. It is a second focal plane, which is just fine for that kind of hunting. Uh, in fact, I prefer it for that. It has half MOA clicks. We can see that up here, and that's kind of unconventional if you're used to like PRS type stuff where there's quarter MOA. No, this is half, and that's absolutely fine for the kind of shooting that we're gonna be doing with this. The scope was really intended for three gun competition, uh, patrol rifle type use and for hunting. And the ballistic reticle that's in there is calibrated for the 223 or 556 with a 68 or 69 grain bullet. Considerably different than what I was using it for the 3030, but I still found it to be very useful. Moving on to the 360 buck hammer, Henry sent us one in their very traditional walnut stock and blued steel model. It is a nice gun if you prefer the classic traditional look. This is, this is the, the gun for you. This is the one that is very different despite the fact that they're built on the same action. It's got some pretty doggone nice uh, checkering on there. It's got a little foreign cap. It's got a very good recoil pad, which is handy shooting that 360 buck hammer. Both of these guns came with some really nice accessories. Grove Tech swivel slings, the uh, Grove Tech sling that I put on there, synthetic sling that I put on this basically all weather type of gun here with the synthetic stocks. And then a real nice Diamond D leather sling that I put on the traditional buck hammer. Those are made up in Alaska and they're really high quality leather gear. 
For the sight and scope mount on this, I replaced the standard sight with a Skinner peep sight, which I really like. And this one has the Tally quick release rings, which is real nice if you want to pop back to sights instead of a scope. The scope I took off my old 375 H&H, and it's a one and a half to five loophole, which is still available in a more up-to-date version, and you can even get it illuminated. Both these scopes have tremendous field of view out there at 100 yards and up close, which is handy. I actually shot a bear at about 15 feet using this scope once. Um, I needed a wide field of view on that one. So for the 3030, I went with the same load I'd used in the past for hunting. I used Lever Evolution powder and 160 grain FTX. I contrasted that with 150 grain round nose soft point that I've also used quite a bit in the 3030 over the years. For the buck hammer, I chose the 200 grain round nose soft point Hornady because it's about the same type of bullet as the factory Remington ammo. Um, apparently a little better bullet, I like that. And I went with CFE Black, which was an unusual choice for me, but the online data clearly showed it to be a very good choice for the 360 buck hammer. Velocity with the hand loads was really, really close. The 160 grain FTX came up with an average of 2308, and the buck hammer with its bigger 200 grain bullet came up with an average of 2311, so very close. So for our chart, I just plugged in 2300 to keep things simple. And also added in a uh, lightweight round nose soft point bullet there, and that got it up. That got up to 2450, so it's 150 feet per second faster than the FTX, but it doesn't have the BC. We start these things all out here, and we see out there at 200 yards makes a real good comparison what's happening out at 200, and we're down to 1829 feet per second for the 3030. Um, that's that's getting down there to where. We're going to have our expansion, but it's not going to be maybe a whole lot beyond that, that we still have good bullet expansion. I don't know that for a fact, but I know at 170, it expanded just fine and went right through that mule deer and exited. Uh, round nose soft point, even though it starts out 150 feet per second faster, is down to 1638 out there. The uh, 360 buck hammer, 1549 with the round nose, and if I was to use the FTX 200 gram bullet, which I have not done yet, it should come in at around 1786 feet per second out there at 200 yards. Energy, foot pounds of energy is one way to compare the power of a cartridge at both the muzzle and then further down range. So we're taking a look at that, and you can see that the heavier bullet of the buck hammer at roughly the same muzzle velocity as the 3030 is starting to pay some big dividends here. 1879 foot pounds of energy at the muzzle for the 3030, whereas we're at 2349 for the buck hammer. Same velocity, bigger bullet, hits harder. We take that down range, take that out to 200 yards, and we're starting to see the tail really told. Take a look at those 3030 figures. 1,189 foot-pounds of energy versus a mere 883 for the 150 grain round nose soft point. Yet we know that's an effective bullet, but boy, it's fallen way short on the power factor out there at 200 yards. Go down to the buck hammer, and it's a similar story. If I can use that 200 grain FTX, I'm going to be at 1,416 foot-pounds of energy. With the round nose soft point Hornady, I'm down to just over 1,000, 1,061 foot-pounds of energy at 200 yards. Still substantial. So keeping things simple, this chart reflects a 100-yard zero, which is what a lot of guys that hunt with lever guns do. So you, you might want to take a look at a farther out zero, 150 yards. Why not? So take a look at what you want to do with that, but for our comparison, 100 yards. Interestingly, there's not that much difference out at 200 yards in how much they drop. If they're all zeroed at 100, we're coming in at 6.8, 7.2, 7 inches, and 8.3 inches of drop. So really pretty easy to keep any of them on target reasonable size target at 200 yards. Drop is not that much of a factor for us at 200. So in conclusion, taking a look at the 360 buck hammer, loading for it for the first time, I'm convinced that this is a very worthwhile cartridge. It's useful not just to fill the law requirements, the legal requirements for hunting in those straight wall states, but it's also 
fully capable of filling the shoes of the old 35 Remington and frankly it has enough more thump than the 3030 to make it a very attractive option if you're shooting some heavier game you're shooting those big northern deer maybe you're even going to push it up to elk or bear and you want a little bit more thump it's a 35 caliber instead of a 30 caliber bigger bullets heavier bullets it's going to have a bit more of an impact on your game always though we all know that bullet placement, shot placement is key. However, this buck hammer is going to do a good job. It's also got a lot less kick than a warm loaded 4570, something I appreciated when I was testing these loads. Will the 360 succeed? There have been so many lever action cartridges that have come and gone in my time as a shooter. The 730 Waters, the 375 Winchester, some of these things are, are barely alive anymore, if at all. I think it's got a good chance of success, and I hope it does. It's a very worthwhile cartridge. If I could have only one lever gun, terrible thought, I would give careful consideration to a 360 buck hammer. To me, it looks like pretty much a do-everything. Uh, I wouldn't push it up to the really heavy big game. No, no, no. But for anything lower 48 that I was out hunting, you bet. Absolutely. If I could do it within range, I would absolutely do that. What I want to know, is there any of you guys already out there hunting with and loading for the 360 buck hammer? If so, great. Tell us about your loads and how they're working out. If not, what are you using for a lever gun that's maybe bigger than the 3030, or is the 3030 enough for you? Drop a comment and we'll have a discussion. That means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're going to want to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you want to learn lucrative gunsmithing like what I show here on the channel, including building custom rifles and Cerakote plus a whole bunch more, you're going to want to check out the Colorado School of Trades, schooloftrades.edu. Thanks again for watching.